tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we get to know a little creature that you may be surprised to know exists in Hawaii. I'm talking about the brush-tailed rock wallabies. What? Wallabies in Hawaii? That's right, and they've been here for more than a hundred years. We'll learn about these amazing little creatures from the people that studied them, like Dr. Skip Lazell and the late Ron Walker. Then I'll show you how to draw a wallaby, and we'll learn how to paint them too. All this and more on this wonderfully hoppy episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Wallabies in Hawaii. That's right, we got wallabies in Hawaii. But how, who, what, when, where, why? Well, in 1916, brush-tailed rock wallabies were brought from Australia to a private zoo at Aleva Heights in the area near Kamehameha Schools. A pair of them escaped and are responsible for producing the tribe of wallabies that inhabits the cliffs of central Oahu today. We'll hear a little more about the wallabies from my late friend, wildlife manager and artist, Mr. Ron Walker. My name is Ron Walker. I'm a wildlife biologist. I worked for the State Forestry and Wildlife Division for 37 years and then retired from the state and worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service for another eight years. Why are the wallabies in Hawaii is an interesting story. A private landowner up in uh, Aleva Heights up here on Oahu uh, got some wallabies, a male, a female, and a baby, uh, and put it in a tent in his backyard temporarily because he was going to have a private zoo. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at night, some dogs got into the tent and chased the male and female out of the tent into the woods, and that's how they became established here. Well, I was working as a wildlife biologist. We hired a biologist to come here, uh, Dr. Skip Lazell. He's a geneticist and a mammologist, so an expert on wallaby. So he and I and uh, my staff went up and did, did a study of the wallabies, actually capturing the animals and measuring them. Of course, this is a marsupial, so the baby, is, when it's born, is like an inch long. And it's in that pouch for 245 days. That's a long time in the pouch. They also live on cliffs. It's, it's a brush-tailed rock wallaby, so they like rock cliffs. And any animal in the wild, of course, is dependent on a good food supply. And they pick uh, an area which is uh, abundant in Christmas berry, guava, they love guava. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about it because they are a, a subject to predation by dogs. Plus the wallabies have a habit of crossing uh, the highway and get hit by cars. But we don't want them to die out because in Australia they're considered endangered. So they're a very, a very important animal to uh, Australia and interesting to us here in Hawaii. Mahalo, Ron, for your many years of service for Hawaii's wildlife. In the 1980s, I was fortunate to be one of the volunteers that caught and measured the wallabies. I really wanted to see them up close so I could study them to draw and paint. Decades later, I was curious to know what became of the wallaby as they would come up on the news from time to time. Wallabies are pretty reclusive and are rarely seen by people. They've been reported from Nu'uanu, Kalihi, Moanalua, and Halava Valleys. When I looked up wallabies in Hawaii, there was not a lot out there, but a video by Charles Lee was entertaining and informative. For almost a century, rumors persist of strange creatures on its slopes, creatures that should only exist 
on a continent thousands of miles away. And here's where our journey begins. Never attempt an expedition without the proper training and physical conditioning. All right, let's get started. Hey! Okay. I contacted Charles and our friend Alex, and we went looking for wallabies in the place where we studied them many years before. We're hunting wallaby. It's in places like these that the wallaby like to stop and rest and uh, leave a little evidence behind. Even though the wallabies weren't home at the moment, we could tell they really liked this spot. Further inspection of the wallaby poop confirmed what we've known all along. They like to eat grasses and fruits and Christmas berries. Because the wallabies are so elusive, it's very hard to find them, see them, and it's really hard to get a picture of them. The best that we could do is find a quiet spot to look, listen, and enjoy being in nature. And of course, we did our best to get some pictures. In my recent conversations with Dr. Skip Lazell, he reminded me that the Hawaii population of brush-tailed rock wallaby are significantly different than their Australian ancestors. He noted the small gene pool and unique Hawaiian environment as reasons for their rapid evolution. Now get your paper, pens, and pencil ready, because when we return, we'll draw a wallaby. Alright friends, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a brush-tailed rock wallaby, okay? And you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to form it up just using simple shapes like uh, ovals and uh, ovals and more ovals, yeah? Okay, I tell you what, I'll put the rock wallaby sitting on a rock right around here. I'll make an oval for the body, about that big, and I'll make another oval for the head, and I'll put the head right around there. Oh my goodness. Now I'm going to give them another couple of ovals, which we might change to triangles for the ears. Here, we'll put one there and one there. Uh, wallaby is a mammal. It is a marsupial. Uh, that means something. I'll tell you what it means after I look it up. And um, I know they got big old legs. They're like little kangaroos. So let's put a big old circle for its nice muscular legs there. They're going to come down here a little bit and another oval for their big old feet, okay? And then I'm going to give some room for a nice little tail right around here. Okay, now I'm going to kind of connect the head to the body and give them some front legs. Now the front legs are much smaller than the back legs, but we'll use ovals to make them too, okay? I'm going to make uh, two sides, yeah? And for the back leg, I will show a little hint of his back leg too. Yeah, so it looks like he's got two legs. And then, of course, his tail. Just come around here, swing it around. You're about that big, okay? So this is my form-up. It gives me an idea of how big things are, if anything needs to get bigger or smaller. And uh, before I finish this part up, I think I'll put the maca in, yeah, right around there. Maybe one you can see a little bit on the other side, and kind of give an idea where the nose is going to go. I'm also going to put a, like the rock where he's, you know, standing on or crouching on and some grass and maybe a little hint of the valley and blah, blah, blah. So right there, I've formed up my brush tail rock wallaby. Okay, so now that I've got my rock wallaby formed up and sketched out, I'm going to use a bigger pen and you can press a little harder with your pencil or you can use a pen now. And I'll start right here on the head, right on this side of the ear and go Okay, and certain lines that go in front of other lines, they tell the viewer what's in front of what. I'll 
come all the way around the tail here and at the end of the tail I'm going to start making it look a little brushy tailed okay not just all straight but a little brushy tailed connecting to the body now right here this is one of the most important lines it's that line of that big strong back leg muscles that wallabies and kangaroos depend on for jumping and sometimes fighting and uh, boing, boinging, boing, boing. Boing. I'm going to start that right here, go around it here, come down to the foot. On the foot I got long feet and kind of like some toes there, a little heel there. Yeah, and we got a little curve that can tell what part of the leg is what? Yeah, he's got his leg kind of folded under him like that. I'm going to put in the ears here and I'll give them a little bit of a point. Okay. Got pretty good sized ears. And you can kind of show the inside versus the outside of the ear over there. I'll put the maka. The maka is the eye, yeah. I can leave a little white part in there and make most of that eye nice and dark. Okay, showing a little bit of the eye on the other side and the nose and the mouth. We're not really showing too much of the mouth here, but we also can put some like, you know, just little whiskers there. You know, animals, they get whiskers to help them like feel their way around rocks and in the dark and stuff like that. Now for the front feet, I'm going to come down, go to the chest, and one of the front feet is going to be kind of like, kind of holding it like a little bunny rabbit might hold something. Now what do wallabies like to hold? Well, they like to hold branches, they like to eat fruit and grasses and Christmas berries and things like that, so that's what these little hands are there for. Okay, now I'm going to put the hint of another arm back there and it's kind of just like the same shape over there and then continue the body and also put a hint of a repeat the shape of another leg back there the big back leg okay so you make it look like one's in front and one's in the back I'll make the line for the rock And there you have it. I just outlined my brush tail rock wallaby sitting on a rock. Now in this drawing, I'm going to do a little bit of shading, okay? Putting in some shadows. So like determining where the sun's coming from. I'll say the sun's coming from up there. And uh, I'll make a little bit of uh, these kind of little, ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, um, little furry looking things. Plus I've also got little color patches, you know? It's got a little dark line in the middle over there and so you can kind of put color patches on what might be dark and what might be light. So you have some lines in there. But now's a good time to add some shadows. So I'm going to shadow these areas like these legs that are behind, you know, the front leg behind one. I'll give it a little bit of shadow. I'll also do the same thing for the back leg, the one that's behind. Shade it a little bit, yeah? Okay, um, on the rock, I'm going to put a shadow on the rock that he's casting onto the rock where he's sitting. And another fun place to put the shadow would be where the tail goes. Kind of telling the viewer, you know, that there's a shadow he's sitting on there. Okay, shade in places where the sun don't hit. And that will give your rock wallaby some form. Now for the tail, you can also make it seem a little more brushy by adding shadows in there. The ones right close to you can just be little dots. And as they get farther towards the outside of the tail, they can turn into little lines and bigger lines to make it that brushy tail effect, which is why the brush tail rock wallaby is called a brush tail rock wallaby and not the mop tail rock wallaby or something.
and I'll continue my shading. Now I'll shade a little bit inside of the ear and the nose. And ta-da! My brush-tailed rock wallaby that lives in Hawaii. <laughs> I wouldn't want to leave my wallaby without something to eat, so I'll draw him some Christmas berries right here. When we return, I'll show you how I go about painting a wallaby. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how I go about painting a brush tail rock wallaby. I'm going to do it with oil paints a la prima. Yeah, a la prima, what does that mean? Um, it is a way of painting wet one time, okay, one session, um, all at once. <laughs> first, I'll start with my background like I usually do, painting the farthest things away first. Then I'll work my way closer and closer, being conscious of what things I'm putting behind my main subject, which is the wallaby. I'm keeping in mind what colors are gonna make the wallaby stand out. So I'm putting some bright green grasses behind the wallaby, which is gonna be brown. If you're using a slow drying paint like oil paints or Genesis paints, you can use a soft brush to blend the background colors, making them more blurry. That way, when you do your foreground objects, they'll be nice and sharp and contrast against the background. Then I'll do my bright red shapes of the Christmas berries. Now I'll start mixing the colors for my wallaby. I think I'll start with about four or five colors of varying degrees of brown and tan and black. When I'm putting colors down on my palette, I'll put them around the perimeter or the edges of the palette first, slowly working my way towards myself. My next goal is to cover the canvas with paint by filling the wallaby in with color. Sometimes I'll draw myself a little map on my painting, starting with the darkest things first. At this stage, don't worry too much about getting the right colors in the right place. Just get some paint down there and you can adjust it later. I'll paint his nose so you can smell a little better. Then I'll put some shadows in to show what's behind and what's in front. I like to work around the muzzle area. And you know I like my sound effects. Then I'll go and add the light parts. Their tail is brushy and black. I leave it a little light part where you look right into the fur. And now I'll go work on their darker markings. You know, they got kind of like dark sides. They also got like dark stripes on their big back legs and their front legs too.
Don't forget to dot the eyes. I'll give those leaves some shape. And make those Christmas berries berry red. And there, I hope the wallaby is happy. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's brush-tailed rock wallabies. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send a picture of you and your art to aloha at patrickching.com. <laughs> Bye-bye. Never attempt an expedition without the proper training and physical conditioning. All right, let's get started. Well done.